Hi, 10th grade. Miss Boyd here with The Yearling, chapters 5 through 8. All right, chapter 5. It's It starts off with Penny talking about wanting the new gun. Because remember, his old one doesn't work. It's not trustworthy. It backfires on him. Um, so, he knows, I mean, he can't afford to buy one, so he's going to trade one. And you see that he's going to trade the Feist, the new dog. So remember, this is the dog that, with the scrape with old Slewfoot, this is the dog that runs off, okay? He is not a good hunting dog, okay? So he's going to take the dog with him to trade it, and then he's also taking Jody so he can learn how to baby, basically socialize with other people, okay? And again, you have... His mother say, <clears throat> the Foresters is a fine place to begin. Um, do you, or do he learn from them? He'll, he'll learn to have a heart as black as midnight. So again, Ma Baxter over and over and over again, keeps talking about how the Foresters are black hearted. They're not good people. They're not nice people. So <clears throat> before he leaves, Jody makes sure his mother has enough wood and for Jody, he's excited because he gets to see his best friend is Oliver, but his second friend is Fodderwing, okay? So Fodderwing is one of the Forester boys, okay? So they get Caesar, their horse saddled up, and Penny and Jody get on. Jody's in front like he usually is, but it even says that Penny, if, if Jody keeps on growing, um, Penny won't be able to sit behind him because he can't see over him. So that's how small Penny is. So they're going, um, and on the way, it talks about the Spaniards. Remember, this is Florida. So the idea of the Spanish coming in, blazing trails throughout there. And there's superstitions and stories about how sometimes you can still see the Spaniards there, which, of course, isn't true. But you'll see that in here sometimes. And it just describes the beauty of nature and how... Um, Penny and Jody both love hearing the birds. It's better than music. And then when they get to the foresters, before they get there, Penny lifts up the feist in his arms, okay? And Jody's like, why are you doing that? And he goes, don't worry about it, okay? And so they get there, and <clears throat> um, he warns him not, or he warns his son not to bother Fodderwing and he said, you better stick with Oliver as far as being your best friend. His tail's as tall, this is Oliver, uh, and they're as tall as fodder wings, but at least he knows when he's lying. So it kind of sets that up for you with fodder wing, that he tells a lot of tall tales, um, but he doesn't always know when he's lying. So it kind of tells you that something's not necessarily right with him in his mind, okay? And so they get to the foresters. There's always a ruckus going on. It's chaos. They come outside. They invite them in. And Jody sees Fodderwing. And they're so excited to see one another. And it describes um, Fodderwing as humped and twisted. And he walks with a, a walking stick. And it says his friend's body was no more unnatural to him than the body of a chameleon or a possum. And they gave him the name Fodderwing because fodder is hay, okay? And it says when he was younger, this is where it gets into his mind's not quite right. Um, he got the idea that he could attach fodder to his arms and that he could float free like a bird, okay? And, of course, it doesn't work. And he falls, breaks some bones, and it makes him even more kind of twisted and hunched than he already was. So this tells you when he was born, he wasn't right in his body and he wasn't right in his mind. So he came out not correctly, okay, as a baby. And for Jody, he says he can understand why he'd want to fly because every single day he's trapped in this body that doesn't work correctly. So um, one thing that's very different between Jody and Fodderwing immediately as fodder wing has a ton of pets jody and his family really don't all of their animals are for a purpose fodder wing and their family the foresters they and this kind of starts in this chapter with fodder wing 
um, they have the means and the ability to have things for pleasure like animals. And so he gets to see the baby raccoon and all of that. Um, and they talk about how he, he's only nice when he's a baby. When they get older, I'll have to let him go. But immediately right there, that shows you a difference between um, Jody and his family and Fodder Wing and his family. The foresters have an abundance. They have things for pleasure. They don't have to worry about food. They don't have to worry about this. The Baxters, everything has a purpose. I mean, from the very beginning with the broom made out of straw and hay and the corn shucks that are used to scrub the floor, everything they have has a purpose, okay? So you meet the Foresters in chapter six. There's seven boys. So the six, Buck, Millwill, Gabby, Pack, Ark, and Lim, they're all huge. The only one that's small at all is Otterwing. So it describes them all, but it focuses in on Lim, and, that's, and it says that he always uh, was quiet, and he sat apart from everyone, and he was always brooding and sulking and had a bad attitude. So <clears throat> they go inside, and... Um, you have Penny still holding that dog. And then, of course, Lim's looking at it like, why are you holding it? And you'll notice through this whole thing with the dog, with the feist, Penny tells the truth. He's holding the dog so the other dogs don't mess with it. But for the foresters, they just think it's because he's special. And then literally Penny's like, he's a sorry dog. He's a terrible hunter, et cetera, et cetera but they're just sitting there staring at that dog, okay? And that's when they find out that Penny and Jody had a run-in with Slewfoot, okay? So here's where you learn something else about Penny. So Penny can out-hunt all of them, but he's also known, everybody knows it, that he's a wonderful uh, storyteller. He's great at it, okay? So <clears throat> before they let him tell his story, Ma Forrester's like, quit being rude. We need to allow him to have some drink and some food. And she lays out this spread and she says, if I would have known I would have had company, I would have had something nice. And then, of course, when she says that, it says Penny's face uh, was grave. And Jody can't understand that. Jody's looking at all this food like, this is awesome. This is great. And then you have Penny that is just kind of smiling like, I mean... I think about it. They have way more than they ever need. And then, of course, Penny, I mean, he's the man of the household and he knows what a struggle it is for his family to put food like that on the table. And they'll never have the abundance that the foresters have. So they eat. You notice that um, Buck and Millwell, the other brothers, always save the best bits for Fodderwing. So there's a soft spot for Fodderwing in there. And <clears throat> chapter seven. Finally, after they eat and all of that and they're comfortable, they all want to hear the story about Slewfoot. So they uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of clean up the table. The boys do it, although there's just a ton of food still left over. And it even says, at this point, Jody gave to the abundance of food because uh, he's not used to that. And then he pauses to light his pipe, tells a story. It's the best. I mean, Jody uh, is like, even he was just riveted and, and he was there. And of course, all the foresters know who slew footed. Everybody does. And they all want to take him out. And so they're sitting there looking at this dog like, well, he must be a great dog if he doesn't even have a, a scratch on him. And Penny over and over again is saying, he's a sorry dog. He's a lousy hunt. You don't want him. He's terrible. And Lim is bound and determined to get that dog. So he offers Penny a gun, not just any gun, but a gun that you can literally just put cases in. It says, no more muzzle loading. Like this is a brand new, extremely expensive gun. And Penny takes the gun. I, they told, I mean, Penny told him the truth. He's a terrible dog. He doesn't hunt, et cetera, et cetera. But in their mind, they've made up that this is a great hunting dog and Lim wants him and here, take this wonderful gun because it literally it says Jody looks around on their walls and they have like gun after gun after gun. I mean, it's everywhere. Again, they have an abundance of everything. Okay. So <clears throat> as far as 
Penny, he takes the gun, he puts it in his lap, and for them, it they're not in a hurry, the foresters. They, it says they're unhurried, they're unoccupied, they want to hear more stories. Um, but for Penny, he knows he needs to get back because there's work to be done and he doesn't want to leave Ma Baxter alone without a man on the property. So he does allow Jody to stay, okay? And, um, he kind of stays with Fodderwing and helps him with all the animals that he has. The foresterman, I mean, there's six huge sons. So they can go around and they're super strong. They can do lots of things with ease. Unlike poor little Penny and Jody. And it takes them, I mean, think about a huge forester versus two small. One's a boy and then a small man. They can do like seven to 10 times the work that the Baxter guys can do. So they do their chores leisurely. It says there was an ease and an abundance here as well as violence, okay? So although Jody doesn't want to see it, it hints to you as a reader that what Ma Baxter says, that they're black-hearted, they have the ability to be that. And they eat again. There's a ton of food. Um, and you have this little conversation between Fodderwing and Jody about the Spaniards and Fodderwing wholeheartedly thinks they're there. And this is where Jody, um, kind of says, this is why his father and mother said Fodderwing was crazy because Fodderwing tells stories that are lies, but he thinks that they're true. So he's not mentally stable. He's not all there. So it's in the middle of the night there's chaos in the house, a varmint gets in, the dogs come in, and everybody wakes up, and then, of course, um, they can't go back to sleep, so they stay up, they play music, they fiddle, um, all these things, and Jody's just totally enjoying this. This is something unlike he's ever experienced, and then at the end, you have, um, they're talking about, Lim references his sweetheart, and Jody asks, who's your sweetheart? And he says, Twink Weatherby. And then um, Jody says, why, she's Oliver, remember her, his best friend, Grandma Hutto's son, Oliver. Why, she's Oliver Hutto's gal. And then it says, Jim, or sorry, <laughs> Lim lifted his fiddle bow. Jody thought for an instant he meant to strike him. Then he went on with his fiddling, but his eyes smolder. And then he said, you say that again in your life, boy, and you'll not have a tongue left to say it with understand. So that black heartedness, you're seeing it. And Jody, being young as he is, doesn't necessarily really understand that moment. Um, he feels bad for a little bit. OK. Um, but of course, with the music and the food, he gets excited and he forgets about it. So chapter eight, Jody's back at home. And it says that um, he had a huge, large deer hide there. Uh, Penny did. And, of course, he's sad he missed it. <clears throat> and it talks about that he should have known, Penny should have known the foresters what had the gun loaded for him already. They leave it on the wall loaded. And so um, he asks about how Julia's doing. She's fine. Um, give her another month and she'll be good to go. And, of course, of course, Jody says he's sad about missing the hunt, but he's not sad about missing the way a deer looks when it's dead. So he's got that tender spot in him. So through this little bit, um, it talks about them having uh, more food because of the deer and then the pig being killed. So they have more meat. Um, so it's something that as far as the Baxters, they're not really used to, especially in the hard end of the winter months. And he helps his mother with the wood. It's, there's always work to be done. Um, but it says meat was uh, before them piled high on their plates and the Baxters fell to. And so at the very end of this chapter, Ma again says that they're black hearted and they're lower than a, a doodle bug. OK, and for Jody, he still can't understand why his mother says that about the foresters. He says, well, they just make music. There's nothing wrong with them. And um, 
He says, they're purely friendly, Ma. And she says, that's all right if they got nothing better to do. And you're going to see this in Jody. He's kind of pulled to two sides. He's got his mother saying they're no good. And then he loves fodder wing. And for him, when he's over there, it's fun. It's carefree. He can't understand why they, that his mother says that about the foresters. So keep that little bit in mind because this is a coming of age story for Jody in a lot of ways. And when it's a coming of age story for a young boy and you're presented with something like that where he's got a choice that he has to make. Are the foresters good? Are they not? Which one are they? You know that that's going to present itself as a theme throughout the novel. And those are your four chapters.